The film which you are about to see is the account of the horrific mauling which befell a man in the backwoods of Montana. Originally from the small town of Columbia Falls, Montana, 36-year-old Andrews Brost was someone who loved the outdoors and to go on amazing adventures. His favorite hobbies ranged from skiing, biking, hiking, fishing, and really anything a person could really find themselves doing outside, Andrews typically loved to do. This was such a big part of his life, in fact, that he and his wife would eventually move to the outskirts of town just to get closer to the nature that was all around them. Well, on the faithful day of November 11th, 2018, Anders was planning on taking a weekend trip to the mountains to help teach his good friend Dan Hansen how to properly hunt in the Montana wilderness. They were mainly only planning on hunting elk and deer and were ready just to relax and enjoy the nature that lay ahead of them. The area that they were heading to wasn't too far away as it was just a little north of the town and it was a perfect place for hunting as it was known for having mainly moose, elk, deer, cougars, wolves, coyotes, and of course, black and brown bears. And that morning, our two friends managed to push their way through a few inches of thick snow as they were looking for a good place to set up a lookout, when suddenly, they approached a thick brush and decided to try and navigate their way through it to see if there was a better spot on the other side. Then Dan decided to crouch down and wait, simultaneously recording with his phone as Andrews pressed on to see if there was something on the other side. As he was walking forward though, most of his gear would end up getting caught on different branches and his visibility was limited to only a few yards in front of him. So because of this, he was making sure to be as careful as possible. As he was pressing forward and fighting his way through the brush though, he would end up looking up and seeing something that would make his heart drop into his stomach and his blood run cold. Almost like something straight out of one of his worst nightmares, it was a massive brown bear slowly rising from the back of a large log only 15 yards in front of his own position. And with such an elite sense of hearing and smell, the bear had actually noticed Andrews before he even made an appearance, as Andrews woke him up from his nap a few minutes earlier. The bear was clearly enraged now, and within a blink of an eye, started to charge down Andrews with incredible speed, almost as if he was being chased down by a large brown SUV. Anders, trying to get away, then began to back up and at least try to get his rifle from around his shoulder to help protect himself. Unfortunately though, he was still surrounded by thick brush everywhere, so he struggled to get it around as he felt his heart beating out of his own chest. Then, just as the bear was ready to pounce on her friend, he managed to pull the rifle around his body. Though as the bear tackled him to the ground, he only managed to graze the bear's shoulder with a muzzle, which did nothing at all to hinder his advance. Then knowing that there was no time to disengage the safety that was on his rifle, all Anders could do was brace for impact and hope that this nightmare would be over quickly. Unfortunately for Anders though, in his mind, time would slow down to an absolute crawl, as before he even had time to process what was happening, the now 1000 pound perfect natural killing machine was on top of him. And before he could so much as let out a scream for help, the almost 3 inches of canine teeth bit down onto Anders' arm with the force of about 1160 pounds per square inch, destroying it almost instantly. Then, as the ferocious bear had a hold of his arm, he began to wildly whip his large head side to side, almost like a large angry dog. And as a result, Anders would end up hearing almost every single bone splinter or break in the bear's massive jaws, as well as the horrifyingly loud pop of his shoulder being dislocated as the bear was slinging him around like a rag doll. Then, as Anders lifted his left hand up to try to shield himself, the bear quickly attacked it twice, nipping at it but luckily not doing too much damage. Then, in an attempt to drag Anders off into the woods to finish him off, the bear proceeded to go for his left leg and clamp down on his ankle. Anders then managed to kick the beast off only for a second though as he quickly grabbed him again and pulled him downhill a few feet more. Then, as he was being drugged, Anders managed to reach out and grab a few tree roots in order to try to stop himself from being this massive bear's lunch. But it would only make the bear lose his grip slightly on Anders' ankle and move down to his boot, which the bear immediately bit down cutting through most of the leather and narrowly missing several of his toes. Then the bear continued walking forward and Anders could start feeling his boots starting to slip off into the bear's mouth. It was at this time that he recalled having a strange fear of losing his boot as he knew that he would need it on his way back for his safety. Well, that was if he was going to be fortunate enough to survive this horrendous ordeal. 
Then suddenly, perhaps because the bear heard the footsteps of Dan approaching, he suddenly dropped Anders' foot and ran into the thick brush behind him. And all before Dan even had a chance to even do anything with his rifle that he had on himself. Anders then yelled out to Dan to start firing his rifle into the air towards the bear to continue scaring him off. Which luckily worked as the massive brown bear ran off to get to a safer location, as the entire attack itself lasted only a mere 30 to 15 seconds. Then, as Dan ran up to his friend to check his condition, he remembered thinking to himself as he was actually surprised of seeing Anders on the ground at all, as the whole time he recalls not hearing a single thing from the entire attack. Luckily for the two though, they were still in a location that had cell phone service, though for some odd reason, instead of calling for help immediately, Anders decided to call his wife Anika to let her know exactly what had just happened, and after expressing her concern, the men had decided to try and hike their way out and back to the car as they tried to drive themselves to the hospital. Though not taking in the severity of Andrew's wounds, as they tried to walk a few steps, his left knee would end up hyperextending and bending 90 degrees in the opposite direction, which finally resulted in the pair calling for help as they knew that getting back alone would now be impossible. As they called, the local police were then able to triangulate the friend's location, and fortunately for the pair, a man by the name of Brian Summers, a criminal investigator for the Montana and Fish Wildlife, and leader of the Wildlife Human Action Response Team, along with three other game wardens and a medical team, were then able to find Anders and Dan's location, and quickly as possible, load Anders onto the rescue helicopter and take him to a nearby Kalispell Regional Medical Center. The investigative crew then combed over the area to look for any clues to what could have possibly caused such a horrific attack. They made sure to photograph everything, took notes as to where the backpack imprint was indicating where he was initially attacked, as well as DNA samples where they took from the bear where he was laying down initially. That way they could at least see if this was an already tracked bear or a completely new one that came in under the radar. As soon as they were able to bring Anders to the hospital, a man by the name of Dr. Joe Bergman was there waiting for him as he was a specialist in trauma and bear mongs. Then finally, after inspecting him, it was determined that Anders suffered several broken bones in his right arm and hand, including a dislocated shoulder. He also suffered a ruptured meniscus, torn ligaments and tendons, as well as a broken fibula and all torn up flesh all over his left leg. Fortunately though, he only suffered a couple of bite marks on his left hand, where he could have gotten the entire thing bitten off. Anders then stayed an extra seven days as he received the help that he desperately needed. Then miraculously, by the end of the next few months, he was able to complete physical therapy and was back to normal. Following the incident, Andrews made up his mind that there was truly nothing he could actually have done to avoid the encounter. He also willingly admits that going too far into bear country, he knew he was wrong in taking the risk. He also plans on continuing hunting as well as all the other outdoor activities that he was already partaking in and encourages everyone else out there to experience the same outdoors for themselves before it's too late. And with that being said, thank you once again for joining me. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.